what water temp do you start to see steelhead and salmon enter the rivers? What's up guys, my name is Will Mallon. I'm the owner of First Light Fishing Company. I'm an angler with over a decade of fishing experience. Over the past four years, I have tracked the exact water temp that these fish enter the river, when you see them in small numbers, large numbers, and when they actually start biting. So let's get right into it. These fish, they have a pretty good internal clock but they aren't using a calendar. You know, you typically start to see salmon in late August in the Salmon River, but that's not because the fish know, oh, it's late August, it's time to go in the rivers. It's all a temperature thing. So if it gets cold enough in July, they're in there. But if it stays too hot, you're not gonna see them until September or October. So it's all a temperature thing. It typically happens around the same time every year. Just know that it's a temperature thing purely. It's not a calendar or time of the year, um, like a, not like a day of the week thing for the fish. So what I found is I start to see some numbers of salmon when the water is 75 degrees. And that is literally like if you're scouting the river all day, you'll see one or two splash up. On Salmon River and us we go, this will be the same across all bodies of water. It's purely a temperature thing. It's not specific to a certain body of water. So 75 degrees, I start to see some presence of salmon, but not really enough to start targeting them. Once the water hits 73 degrees, you start to see some more. This is when you see, start to see some people going out and targeting them. Certain pods, not huge, but certain groups of, of salmon moving up the water. Once the water hits 70, you start to see even more numbers. They start to be in even larger groups and even more consistent action. This is when if you're flossing salmon and the salmon don't actually have to bite in order for you to catch them, this is when it starts to get pretty good. The exact time that I've seen where you can actually get salmon to start biting on skein, egg sacs, and beads is 68 degrees. 68 degrees, uh, there's an, plenty of days where I was fishing multiple days in a row over the course of a week, week and a half, and it'd be 71, 70, 69 and I wouldn't catch anything and then the next day 68 and that's when I'd finally get them to bite. This being said, let's take Oswego for an example. Like last year I caught one on September 9th and that was a flossed fish. I didn't get one to actually bite until September 21st. On September 21st, um, you could look back at it but they took the temperature gauge off at Oswego. That was the first day that the water hit 68 degrees that night and a little bit in the morning and that's when I caught the fish when the water hit 68 degrees for the first time that fall. Now for trout, um, the trout will follow the salmon as a food source, kind of like the Native Americans following the buffalo because they follow the food source. Um, so some trout will come up right with the salmon, right when you know water hits 75 degrees. I haven't gotten steelhead and brown trout to actually bite until the water hit about 65 degrees. 65 degrees, these trout like a little bit colder water. They may come in at 70 and they kind of chill out, not be very active until it's 65 degrees. It gets better, 63 and 60, of course, all the way down. Uh, I'd say the prime temp for catching steelhead and brown trout in the lake run tributaries would be 55, I'd say is, is like prime. But it, it, you start to see them at low 70s, they start to bite at high 60s, and then they start biting good in the low 60 degree water temps. The, the biggest thing is the fish get more active when the water temp is going towards their optimal temperature. Here's what I mean by this. If a steelhead wants the water to be 55 degrees, that, that's its, its favorite temp. If one day the water goes from 63 and then it's super cold the night and the next morning it's 60, this fish is gonna be really active because the water is getting closer to its optimal temperature, its favorite temp. It's not just because the water is getting colder. If you went to the other side of this, if the water went from 38 to 35, this fish would be less active because it's, yes, it's getting colder, but it's getting farther away from its optimal temperature because it's already colder than its favorite temp. Favorite temp is like 40 to 55. The opposite of this, if the water goes from 38 degrees to 40 degrees, the fish will be more active because it's getting closer to its optimal temperature. And yet, if the water goes from 60 to 62, it's gonna be a little bit less active because it's getting farther from its optimal, its favorite temperature. And kind of a comparison, a local comparison for the spots that I fish most. Once Salmon River gets its first good run of salmon, like clockwork, Oswego will get their run of salmon exactly two weeks after. And again, this is not a calendar thing. 
it's just a temperature thing and how the natural weather patterns go. If you, if salmon ever gets a good run in the middle of September, expect Oswego to get a good run two weeks after that, call it late September or early October. Salmon ever runs colder, it has a lot more springs that feed into it, which keeps that temperature down in the fall. And it keeps it actually a little bit warmer in the winter as well. Oswego, all the water is pulled right from a dam and it's a top flow dam. So the water just gets heated up in the sun and then dumps right into the river. So it takes longer for it to cool down, but it also is colder in the winter, which is not always a good thing. If there's ice chunks on the top of the water, that is the coldest water, and that is the water that is getting pulled over the dam. So Salmon River kind of is less drastic with its, its temperature change. Oswego will start hotter and end up colder. This being said, they're both phenomenal bodies of water that get great runs of fish and is really worth putting your time in and making trips to these bodies of water because they're both fantastic. They're, in my opinion, they're both world-class fisheries that you should fish at least once in your life. One more thing, kind of a different species. There's been many times early salmon season, I'm running beads, egg sacs, and skein. I end up catching smallmouth instead of salmon. I'll be targeting salmon, I'll hook a fish, it'll feel, you know, decent, but not as big as the salmon would, and you get it in, it's actually a smallmouth. This is how you know it's the water is still above the optimal fishing temperature, because if the smallmouth are still in there, and they're still that active, and there's more numbers of smallmouth than there are salmon, it's not prime time yet. So if you're still catching smallies, I feel like it still hasn't gotten quite cold enough to be optimal, yet there still could be a good number of salmon in there. You know, there still could be a lot of salmon that just aren't willing to bite yet and the smallmouth are because the smallmouth optimal temp is warmer than the salmon's optimal temp. Salmon and steelhead are more cold water fish, they like cold water better, and smallmouth is, uh, tends to be a little more warm water fish. Um, it likes the, the spring and, and summer attempts the best. I hope you learned at least uh, one thing new of when salmon and steelhead enter the rivers at what temperature. If you guys want to catch more fish this fall, I have a curated selection of salmon and steelhead fishing equipment, everything you need to be successful out on the water on my website, firstlightfishingco.com. Everything from hooks, floats, center pin reels, float rods, waders, everything you need is on that website with the fastest shipping times. And if you guys want to check out the shop that I'm filming in today, we are in Hannibal, New York, a short drive outside of Oswego, and we are a salmon and steelhead river fishing specialty store. 90% of our products are for salmon and steelhead river fishing, preferably with center pins and float setups. So if you guys want to check us out, we're open six days a week. We're closed Mondays, that's the one day we're closed. Um, give us a call anytime. We're happy to help with any questions you may have with when to fish, where to fish, how the fishing has been, or help with deciding what rod, what reel to buy. We would love to help. So with that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching today's video. Stay tuned for more videos in the future, and hopefully I'll see you guys out on the water. See you guys.